cup running over. So, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. That was the 23rd Psalm. And in that Psalm, David was being pursued constantly, like we are being pursued constantly by the roaring lion.
not coming back. Yeah. We're debating whether they should or shouldn't. Heavenly Father, we know your word gives us guidance about worshiping you. In the house of the Lord, Heavenly Father, we ask you for these guidance. We ask that you to be with the minister and his family. Heavenly Father, we ask that you to be with everyone we know and love. All these things we ask in your son Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. As we would continue in that vein of prayer, I'm going to ask John to uh, give me wings of a dove. more to share. Um, we're, we're getting ready we, uh, to celebrate the memorial service for uh, Mother Moore who passed during the COVID season and, and uh, that was going to happen on the 12th of, of July, the Monday after we opened on the 11th. They just were blessed to go to Hilton Head and to enjoy a vacation. And on Tuesday, they came, they were enacted on Tuesday, and Danny, Carla's husband, suffered a stroke. He was now in general hospital. And I'm asking that the whole church would remember Dan Wilson in the prayers. Father said that may have an impact on the 12th. We'll just keep praying. I want this song to permeate all my heart. Turn that up to me.
bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Let's bless the Lord this morning. I know we had some tears, but I'm getting ready to get in here and have church because he's been good to us. Come on, y'all. I dare you to stand up and help me.
Almighty God we serve. I am <clears throat> anxiously anticipating July 11th. Lord willing, open these doors up again. And we're going to fellowship again. Worship together again. It's been a while. Yeah. We've been out of church for over a year. And now we're getting breakthrough to come back and worship the Lord. I don't know how you feel about it. One thing I do know, <clears throat> the scriptures say over in Psalms 40, beginning at 28, <clears throat> Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary, there is no searching his understanding. He gives power to the faith. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. The youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh, David later said in, in Psalm 14, he said, he said, he said, I would have fainted if I would not have seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he'll strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm I'm revved up. I'm revved up. I'm, it don't have to be 400 people in the church for me to get going. Oh, the Lord's been good to me. Brought me from a mighty long way. And I'm thankful I was <clears throat> over at Joy Park. Uh, the community recognized Pastor Glenn yesterday. I got the Community Faith Award. And we were down at the uh, Juneteenth at Joy Park. And I sung along with Half Mile Home. Had a little celebration over there, but I was I was encouraged because I am the oldest pastor standing in East Akron. June 12th of this year, I've been pastor for 34 years at Macedonia Baptist Church. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell you, I know what that means because I grew up here. So if I had some mess. It'll still be with me because I'm in the town where I did the past. But God kept me. I didn't keep myself. I didn't keep myself. I wanted to get wild. And God wouldn't let me do it. I was arrested, apprehended, detained by the Lord to preach this great gospel. Not only am I preaching in the city I grew up, I'm preaching in the church I grew up in. And that, that, that just baffles me. I said, Lord, I, I don't know. I didn't grow up wanting to be a preacher. I thought it was too bad to be a preacher. I was managed like everybody else. And, but God kept me, gave me position. And I would give nothing for my journey. Give God another hand He's so worthy to be praised. I guess I'll, I'll do a half of another one. John, let's be encouraged this morning. We'll do that and then we'll preach. <clears throat> Might as well get in here when I fit in. So good to see Todd all the way in the back. Put your hand up, Todd. Yes, sir. Good to see you. Yeah. It's good to be, be encouraged. Barnabas, who traveled on the missionary journeys with Paul, was called the son of encouragement. Sometimes you run into a person, they always have a kind word. They always consider you. The scriptures say, be encouraged. The Lord says, be encouraged. Now, anytime the Lord says, be something, 
He gives us the ability to respond that way. So if he says, be courageous, we can do it. If he says, be encouraged, we can do it. If he says, be, be, be holy, we can do it in his power.
sustained us and stayed us alive even one more day. And a thank you is in order, Lord. Much obliged, kind pastor. You've been so good. Some of us have lost loved ones and did not believe that we would ever smile again. Because the pain was so hurtful. Children, husbands, and fathers, and mothers, and siblings have gone on. But yet, Lord, you bring your joy. That's an inside job. It works from the inside out. Songwriter pinned the lyrics not on the outside, but inside strong. We want to thank you. Now it is in the name of Jesus Christ that we preach. Please, dear God, allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, and light upon me your fresh anointing that I might preach your infallible word. In the name of Jesus Christ and all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Bless you on this Father's Day morning. And uh, again, I'd like to salute the fathers and I would like to say um, that it takes more than making a baby to be a father. A father is a unique character that can only be embraced by the power of God. I believe that in my heart. I want to share a passage on this morning and uh, it will have a lot to do with daddies, but the word of God is inclusive. So we'll read from uh, Proverbs chapter 3, just six verses. Listen to this instruction. My son, forget not my law. This is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thy heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck, write them upon the tablet or the table of thine heart. So shall thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. And we all know these two. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. For a subject, I would like to ask, and it's a universal question because I can get a multiplicity of answers. But I like to ask the question, how is your father doing? How is your father doing? And I know in here many of us would have to say, well, he's enjoying a place in heaven, most of us here. But if the audience was the same, there are many men who have children uh, that would have to really take a moment and let that question hit them. Now this is what I believe and I, 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 I don't know anybody that would be willing to debate me on it. When you have a mother 
and the father, then there has to be a child. So the moment you have the biological father, the biological mother, and the child, that equals what is called a family. It does, it's not contingent on if mommy ever marries daddy or daddy ever marries mommy. But if you got mama and daddy and a child, that's a family. And if, not, if it's not, tell me what it is. So I had a Bible study. Uh, Jeff, I had a Bible study here one night, and I asked the question, what, what's better? Which one of these is better? Is it, is it better to marry the father, even if you don't love him, for the sake of the children? Or is it better for daddy to wake up on the west side and mama to wake up on the east side? Which one is better? Neither one. Because when you forfeit God's way, there's no good second substitute. Somebody said, well, 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 should I marry him because I don't love him? But I, 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 that's my, my baby's daddy. That's a war. That's awful. You don't love him, you just win him for the kids. Or I'm not going to marry him, and I'm going to be with somebody else and wake up on the west side and wake up and he's going to wake up on the east side. Which one is better? Neither one of that. That's, that's a mess. Anytime we forfeit God's way, you're going to run into much traffic. I was looking, I was reading, and doing a little bit of my... Uh, praise the Lord. The Lord said I must not need it. And I found out there are so many high percentages. It's right there on the field. So many high percentages of children. Yeah, don't look at it, just bring it in. <laughs> I'm waiting on it, you unfolding it. Like you know what it is, don't you? Praise you the Lord. I'm waiting on it. My preacher opening it up, took it outside in the parking lot. Goodness. 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. 90% of runaway children come from fatherless homes. 85% of children that have behavioral disorders, just out of control, are from fatherless homes. 71% of children who drop out of high school just don't finish. Ninth grade, eighth grade, maybe get to the 10th, are from fatherless homes where daddy is not present in the home. 75% of adolescent children who have chemical dependencies and are, are abusing drugs and are in facilities to help them come from fatherless homes. My, my daughter Candace is the head of school. She's like the superintendent of a school called Heartland that are for teenagers that are hooked on drugs before they can even begin to get a grip on their education, they are geeked out of their mind on, on cocaine and, 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 and taking all types of different drugs on meth and, and, and heroin, all of these things, and they're still in their teens. And they developed the school for that. It has become so prolific, we have to do something to help them to get an education while we fight the war on drugs in their lives. 85% of, of young men who are in prison today, somehow daddy was not present in the home. 
My daughter Diamond had five girlfriends. They were divas. All they, these girls were sharp. They, they graduated from high school. All of them went to college. Diamond was the only one of the five that had a daddy at home. And they all called me daddy. And, and, and they rejoiced in the fact that when we would talk to them, it was Deborah and myself because they didn't have that father figure. And all I'm stopping to say is, I know how your father is doing if he's not following these instructions in Proverbs chapter 3. Listen, listen to Solomon, one of the wisest men that ever lived. Solomon didn't ask God for riches and, and, and power. He asked him for wisdom and understanding and knowledge. And God gave him that and riches. He begins to say, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. You don't keep the Lord's uh, uh, commandments in, in your mind because that can change sometimes. The psalmist said, I hid the word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. He says, there's a tremendous benefit. Listen, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. Listen to the verse 2. For length of days and a long life and peace shall they add to thee. Length of days and long life shall they add. I have talked to some teenagers today. 19 and 20, they already tell me, Reverend, I know I'm not going to live long. Well, what demon has, has bewitched your mind that you don't have a desire to have grandchildren and be called Papa and to be able to take them grandbabies to some wonderful resort one day? What has got a hold of you in this world? No, you don't have to answer that. I know who got a hold of it. He walketh about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Only the devil can give a young man a dominant mind to conceive and to agree with the fact that he won't live long. Solomon is saying that if you keep those commandments and Keep them in your heart. You're going to be blessed with the length of days. That means you're going to grow old. And a long life, doesn't. that's not a play on words. The scriptures don't play on words. Your days will be long, but your life will be full and healthy. Let me tell you all something. Lamentations 3.22 says, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, meaning that we are not annihilated in the run of a day. The reason you didn't get hit by a Mack truck and become fatal as it relates to your life yesterday is because of God's mercy. We don't drive that well. We could be dry. We could be a great driver, but you can't keep the individual that's coming towards you from coming left the center. You don't know what they've been drinking. You don't know what they've been smoking. You don't know what's on their mind. And that's what the Lord do, does every day. He, it's of his mercies that we are not consumed. Why? Because, because his compassions never fail. We'll tell somebody, I don't love that. I don't love her no more. I don't love him no more. God never does that. He's going to continue to love Lisa. He's going to continue to love Charlene. Nothing can break, nothing can separate us from his love. That, it, it's inseparable. And, and, and it's because of the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Why? Because his compassions never fail, number one. And number two, they're new every morning. Every morning, we get a brand new batch of mercy. And I'm glad because I need so much of it in one day, I can say, well, I, I used it all up, y'all. I got there first. And the Lord can tell you, well, Ron, I ain't got no mercy. Glenn just took it all. But his mercies are, are new every morning. And the psalmist says, great is thy faithfulness. He says, for length of days and a long life, not only that, and peace 
shall they add to thee. There is no price tag that you can put on peace of mind. Have you ever been in a ruckus? This everything going wrong, folks fussing and fighting and shouting and hollering, and you make up your mind, I'm breaking, I'm getting out of here, and you go to your home where it's peace and quiet, lock your front door and do what you have to do to relax. Oh, what a, what a rare commodity called peace. Yeah. There was an artist, and, and three artists came together, and they, they were going to draw a picture of peace. The first artist drew a sunrise and a little boy walking down a dirt road with a, 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 a fishing rod on his shoulder in his tackle box in his left hand. And the, and the artist defined it one word, peace. And then the other artist, he drew, he drew a tranquil sunset, sun going down. And, 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 and it looked like, if you will, the sun was melting into the ocean. And the artist named it one word, peace. But the third artist, he drew a picture of a turbulent wave at sea. The water is just crashing against a rock. And the sky was dark. And rain and water and the waves were crashing. And rolling down the rock, and in the cove of the rock was a dove sitting undisturbed. He called it peace. And he got the award because real peace is not contingent on what's going on around us. Come on. Real peace is, is God peace. It is that peace that passes all understanding that shall keep your heart in mind in Christ Jesus. Three things you're going to get. You're going to get length of days and a long life and peace shall God add to thee. And then he says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Don't let mercy and truth forsake means to abandon or desert. Never let mercy and truth abandon you. Desert you. You're going to need them in life. We just talked about how much we need some mercy. Mercy is God not giving us what we rightly deserve. You, everybody in here need that. Because if we got what we rightly deserve, we'd be dead and gone, experiencing eternity. Everybody in here would be with the Lord, but you wouldn't have, got, you wouldn't have been able to finish down here. I thank God I'm a papa. Oh, that's a different kind of love. I, ooh, nobody can tell me nothing about Candace and Diamond. Those are my babies. Oh, my goodness. The brothers could catch it when they came to me. Listen, when you come to see Candace and Diamond, they daddy is home. Back then, I was lifted. I, I was cutting the grass and sweat. I ripped my shirt. Man. They come knocking at the door, not that it's Candace, it's Candace, don't play basketball while you're here. I was tough on them. I was, I was tough on them. And that brother that had his pants already halfway down before he take my daughter out. Uh -uh. Pull your britches up. And I had a keynote saying, I said, listen, they didn't leave here crying. They better not come back crying. And they learned to respect me. And, and I ain't telling neither one of them I was Pastor Glenn. No, I'm Daddy. I'll knock you in the head. That, that's my nickname. All I'm simply saying is, how is your dad doing? I, I wish I had some, some young fathers in here. How is your dad doing? Or maybe some young daddies. Because it looks like what's plaguing our society, if you knock on nine doors in a block, you'll find a mother there, but daddy is MIA, missing in action. So Solomon says, Let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck, and write them upon the tables of thine heart, so shall thou find favor 
and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Then trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust him. Why, why not trust him? We can find in history everybody that invented something. Well, who made the world? Who made us? What, what man can you go to and say, we want to we want to recognize this man because he made man. No, there's not a human being. There, the the all-wise God did that. He took dust from the earth and breathed into man and he became a living soul. Trust that guy. Trust him. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not half of it. Because if you only trust him with half of it, the half of the other half got to trust something else. If you only give God half of your heart, where the other half go to? Somebody else, something else. Trust in Him with all your heart. And then lean not into your own understanding. That's where we got in trouble because I, I, I grew up being taught that, you know, Glenn, you got to follow your instinct. Well, sometimes my instinct can be dead wrong. And a godly decision outweighs a good decision every day. Y'all didn't hear that. A godly decision outweighs a good decision every day. He says, and lean not unto your own understanding. I'm not, I, I know some people that know it all. I know some people that just figure that they, they got the road map. No, I am not going to trust me. I'm going to trust God. Matter of fact, when Jesus came, he said, now whosoever shall come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever shall save their life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose their life for my sake and the gospels the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man to gain the whole world and then lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And lean not unto thine own understanding. In all my ways I'm going to acknowledge him and he's going to show me where to go in life. I'm so glad I got a guy. I hate being lost, y'all. I hate being, I hate losing my way. I, I like to know where I'm going. I, I don't always want to trust the GPS. I'd rather know the way I'm going just in case it routes me the wrong way and make and fool me and make me think that I'm not going the wrong way. I like knowing where I'm going. The word is a a a, a light unto, uh, a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. That means a lamp shows me where I'm at, whether I'm in the right place or the wrong place. And, and a light unto my pathway shows me where I'm going, either in the right direction or the wrong direction. I need that type of instruction. And, 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 and in all thy ways, acknowledge him. In all that ways, I'm saying, Lord, you know the road map. Lord, I'm going to trust in you. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, you can keep me. Acknowledge him. What I want to say to a father as I'm closing the day. If you just made some babies, you're far from a father. Daughters need you and a son needs you. The prisons are overpopulated because daddies wasn't at home. Fathers didn't become fathers to their children. And I want to serve fair notice. I don't have anything to, good to say about how 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 de debated and, and depleted our father system is right now. It's predominantly one parent, single parent, mothers raising everybody. So I want to say to some mothers, happy Father's Day. Yeah, I'm upset about it. I'm upset about it. A daddy raised me. I could have been just like everybody else. But I'm going to say to the son, just because your daddy didn't raise you, you know right from wrong. And you want to follow these instructions. If daddy wasn't home to tell you about 
Proverbs 3, 1 through 6. What well, is there for you to read right now? If you want to save your life, because he gave you long life and length of days, and peace shall be with you. You only got to worry about being dead and gone in somebody's cemetery at 21 years old. I'm so glad I got hope. Yeah, and I'm so glad I got peace. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad I got joy. I got, yeah, I got joy. Like a river and joy, I can't explain. And I got an answer to how your father's doing. If he's not doing well, take him to Proverbs 3, 1 through 6. If he's not at home, when you go home, take him to Proverbs 3. If he's not being the father that he should be, take him to Proverbs 3. If you're not being the father that you should be and you're blaming it on your daddy because your daddy wasn't there, so you feel like you can act out just because daddy ain't home, well, no. God's going to make you accountable for yourself. I'm closing. Brother Terry, I remember I tell the story often. Had, if you will, a grandson. Yeah. A grandson, he was doing bad in school, beating up the teachers and beating up the kids and doing everything. And Brother Cherry was my teacher. He knew Hebrew and he knew Greek. And he could have quoted any scripture he would have thought of for his son. He knew the Old Testament. He knew the New Testament. And he told him, grandson, I got the answer to your problem. And I don't have to pull up a word of scripture to confirm this with you. All you got to do is what's right. Doors of the church are open. Anybody here today? Blaming daddy because you're a rat. Blaming your father because you all messed up. No, you're a man.
we're going to see how it works out. If I get half the church still coming at 11, I'm going to change it. <laughs> but um, I thought maybe everybody might want to get home a little earlier. And, and uh, I believe if I got to go to church on Sunday, I'm getting up. I'm going to just get up. That's the Lord's day. I'm going to get up and I'm going to get into it. So starting at the 11th of July, the second Sunday, in July, we will go back to in-person worship service. We start at a quarter to 10, and we're going to see how that works out for us. I want every Macedonian to be back to Macedonia. We're getting ready to really get the letters out, and uh, I, wanted, I didn't want to take them out too early. You lost them and came at a quarter to 11. I want to get it out right to you so we can get going. Be, be mindful that our Bible study is uh, set on every Wednesday at 6 o'clock, but after the 11th, uh, we're going to start right up on Wednesdays back at the church. It might not be exactly that week, but uh, in, 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 in the weeks to come, very soon, we'll be back in, in service here with our Bible study meeting at the church, and you'll get information on that, too. Don't forget... Uh, how to give. You can give through our PayPal system. Don't let PayPal uh, confuse you. It's just using your Visa uh, or your MasterCard uh, to give to the church. Those that mail your offerings in, we thank God for you. Those that bring your gift and drop it in the mail slot, we thank God for you as well. We're looking forward to have a wonderful time. I want the, few, I want the pews full looking for a wonderful time of worship. So uh, again, happy Father's Day. Now any father of that sermon uh, convicted to you should be convicted. Because you know what you do? You leave your children. You, you set your children out here in a devil's world. If I were you, I'd go get my baby. Let her know I loved her. I'd go get my son. I'd go get my dog. Tell them daddy home. Daddy's home. Amen. Thank God. And if all minds are clear, we're going to go home today. Do something nice for your father. Have a God.